Selangor is located in the middle of the peninsula of Malaysia and it surrounds Kuala Lumpur geographically. Selangor is the most populous state in Malaysia, it is the most developed and it has the highest GDP. Despite its modern infrastructure, the Mahmeri Huan indigenous tribe of Selangor continue to maintain their language and culture to this day. Selangor has an ecotourism center and a number of protected areas to safeguard biodiversity and wildlife. And it is also home to the Forest Research Institute of Malaysia, FRIM, which promotes sustainable management and optimal use of forest resources in Malaysia. Tourist attractions include Batu Caves with its Hindu cave temples, the Sultan Salahuddin Abdulaziz Mosque, Malaysia's top theme park Sunway Lagoon, and Pulau Ketam or Crab Island. I grew up in the next state over from Selangor, so my parents would take us there on day trips every once in a blue moon. And we always, always stopped over in Ampang for its famous Ampang Yong Tau Fu and in Kajang for its famous Sate Kajang. Both of which we will be featuring in today's cooking segments. Yong Tau Fu literally means a stuffed tofu, but it's not just tofu that gets stuffed, it's all kinds of different vegetables and it's stuffed with a fish paste. Ampang Yong Tau Fu is usually served in a clear broth with a side dip and I'm going to show you how to make the fish paste from scratch and show you how to put everything together. Have a look. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the broth, we're going to turn this fish over here into a... Uh, into fish paste and we're going to stuff different types of vegetables and tofu and then we're going to cook them up and then we're going to serve them with the broth and also we're going to make a dip for it. Okay, so quite a few different components to this particular recipe but it will be well worth your time. I've got some chicken stock that I made. I'm going to use some soya beans. Okay. And then I'm going to add it into a piece of muslin cloth. Just tie it up with some string and add it to the soup and boil it some more, okay, to get some flavors into the soup that's going to be served up with the stuffed vegetables. So let's throw that in. And also, the other thing I'm going to add this is what we know in Malaysia as Sun Guang's uh, Sako or in America, they call it hikama. You can also use daikon if you like as well. So we're going to simmer this and I'll come back and we'll do the fish. Okay, so what we want to do with this fish, we want to turn this into a fish paste, okay? This time, because I managed to get mackerel cheap, it's, it's on the bone, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful with it. But because I managed to get it cheap, I decided to have a go at using mackerel for the first time in many, many years. And what I'm going to do is actually, uh, since it's on the burn, I'm going to actually uh, throw the bone into the soup in a bit as well, okay? Just to, again, get more flavor out of it. Back in the day, they didn't have food processor, and my parents used to make this, so they used to have to mince this by hand, you know, using a Chinese cleaver. Not all types of fish fillets would work. That's is an option, red fish fillets is an option. So you see the fish that you get out of it, right? So here's the fish and we're going to blitz this into a paste. So we've got the fish, a bit of water, some tapioca starch, pepper, and chicken powder. And we're just going to pulse this. You have to apply a very light touch, otherwise you could end up ruining your fish paste. Chinese in particular are very particular about the texture of food, okay, not just how it tastes, but how it feels in your mouth. And the idea is with pounding this is it expels all the air bubbles trapped in within the meat and cause it to be more bouncy, okay? So we've got the fish paste. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to get our vegetables ready. And by vegetables, I mean vegetable and tofu, because literally yang tofu means stuffed tofu. You can use these ones here. You can stuff tofu puffs as well. We got some chili, some eggplant in Malaysia. The variety of eggplant in Malaysia is like long and skinny. And 
I'm going to stuff some mushrooms as well. In Malaysia, we would use dried shiitake mushrooms, but we're just going to break off the stem so that it creates this cavity here. The other thing I'm going to stuff is uh, tofu skin. That's one of my favorites, actually. So I've got these that I soaked in water before. The chili, and cut open and pull out the stem. So some okra. Just make sure you cut a slit without breaking it in half. So it's a colorful array of different types of vegetables and tofu. So with the tofu, what we'll do is just cut a little slit in the middle here and take it out. Personally, when I do stuffed tofu, I usually use tofu puffs. So I'm going to do my favorite. This is eggplant. So because this eggplant is really fat, we're going to cut it in half and then we're going to cut it in slices with a slit in the middle. Okay, so you cut it almost all the way down, but not quite. And then you cut the second cut will be all the way down. So you end up with these little basically eggplant pockets. Stuff it. Mushroom. The okra. Okay, so we've got some stuffed vegetables, uh, different varieties of vegetables. As far as cooking them, if you were hakka like me, you would fry all of them. But in Ampang, at Ampang Yong Tau Fu, they would generally um, be a mixture of poaching and frying, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to fry some of them, we're going to poach the rest, okay? Add a bit of oil here. These ones are done. So here's some of the stock from the pot from earlier. And we're going to add these in here. Let's cover it for a little bit. And we'll come back in a second. So what we want to do when this is done, we're going to make some sauce, which is a what we call it in Malaysia, a tim jiong, which is a sweet sauce, literally. But a lot of people, uh, if you have to make it from scratch, you would use ground bean paste, add some sugar, adjust the seasoning, and it looks brown, right? But here in Australia, you can like do the same thing or you a lot of the time we just actually use hoisin sauce. Uh, but we would dilute it a little bit, maybe adjust the seasoning because you're going to find with any kind of Malaysian bottled sauce that the flavors, the uh, the intensity of flavors will vary depending on the brand that you buy. You know that it's done when like the meat is not, like when you press down on it, it resists, okay? If it's still raw, then it would just uh, sink in. Whereas if it's cooked, when you press on it, it will resist. So let's move this and we're going to make the sauce next. So there you go. That's what this looks like. Get some hoisin sauce, the water, the sugar. So you just want to cook it till the sugar dissolves. Okay, so that's the sauce you're going to serve with this. And remember the soup, the stock that we made earlier? Here we did this again. What we're going to do now, you can just add a little bit of salt and pepper. Give it a nice mild seasoning. When you order your yong tau fu, you look at the menu on the board and you go, oh, I want two pieces of tofu, uh, one eggplant and one stuffed chili and some tofu skin. And it'll come out to you. Something like this. Some sauce to go with it. That's the sweet sauce with that. Right? Give it a go and let me know how it turns out and don't forget to tag us on social media if you do post the pictures and if you want the full recipe and more tips make sure you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys. Okay? I'll see you next time.
the history begins with the uh, tin mines. Right. So they were working on the tin mines, and then when the little town started, this is where the, the Yong Tau Fu started back in the 50s and 60s. Right. right. So everybody came around here just to eat the Yong Tau Fu and the, the Sui Kiaos. You know, we used to come, and they were originally not here, they were in the marketplace oh, further okay. down. Okay. So as a kid, I used to come with my dad. We, we, we drove up all the way from Klang just to come and eat Yong Tau Fu. Yeah. And the shops are very small. Right? So now that, you know, uh, They've opened up this area, it's sort of expanded, became very big. Right, right. So the shops are not like what they used to be. <laughs> right. What it is now. So it is so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody in KL comes here to eat Yong Tau. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Batu Cave. It's a special cave because it's a there is a Hindu temple at the slope of this hill. This temple is mostly visited by the the Hindu worshippers and also tourists. Yep, and uh, it's a limestone hill comprising three major caves and a number of smaller, sm smaller ones. To visit the temple, you there are steps going all the way up there, and you have to climb 272 steps all the way to the main temple. Lots to explore here on Crab Island, so let's go check it out. No. All right, let's, let's go. go walk around. Look at the sign. This says Katam. This must say Pulau. <laughs> I think it's just a squiggle. I think it's a interpretive, artistic thing. Oh my gosh! Everywhere, Ivana. Yeah. It's hundreds everywhere. and hundreds of crabs. Everywhere you look. I guess these are baby ones. Not yet. Oh, these two are having a sword fight. Ooh, Whoa! They're fighting each other. Whoa! These these are the crabs that have one big hand. Look over here. They have yeah. one one big hand and one small hand, or a claw. What do you call it? Mm -hmm. There you have it. We've been here for 15 seconds and we've already found the crabs. The name is fitting. So you've got crabs on the right and motorcycle rental on the left. Because my understanding is cars are not allowed. No cars allowed. No cars allowed. Also just not feasible. I mean look how wide the road is. So it's not practical but also not allowed. Yeah. Alright, let's go explore. Um, Lots of businesses, yes. The economic powerhouse of the island. Yeah, shops. Yeah, shops. Restaurants. Electronics shop. No way. Oh yeah. Very interesting. Man, these small little islands make me feel right at home. You know, I know I'm a tourist, but in a different city you can be scared. In a different little island, you feel like right at home. You know? I think I'm the only white guy on the whole island today. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the <laughs> omelette. Clams. Yeah, fresh crab. We're on the crab island, so I figured we have to. We have to do it. Yeah, okay. they also have like different menus, different types of us uh, crabs: salted sure. egg, chili. What else? Sweet and sour. Steam crab. Uh, curry crab. So, what made you choose chili crab? She recommended it. You asked what she wants. Yeah. That's what I would do too. Good idea. <laughs> I was just washing my hands, come out, and Yvonne says, I already ordered. I said, okay. Yeah, so that's what we get. So now, do you know how to eat a crab? I have no idea how to eat crab. <laughs> okay, boom, ready. What are, you, what are you drinking? Tea. Chrysanthemum tea. Hey. Cool. All right, let's eat. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to break this, man. So Dude, I never had this in my life. Look at this. Give me a tool. When I had crab, it was just crab's legs. It wasn't claws. Ooh, still hot. I don't remember much. I remember I was young, my friend's house, and I remember I'm just filling up on salad and rice. <laughs> so I couldn't eat your crab legs. Very soft. So this is fresh crab. Yeah. Locally caught. I think so. Wow. It must be. It's Crab Island. It's Crab Island. Yeah, they're, if they're flying in crab to Crab Island, I'd be like, come on, guys. <laughs> okay, there you have it. So, Ivana, based on your crab experience, is this worth 80 ringgits? Yes. Hello, hi, Mazda Martin here. So, today my menu is actually satay kajang. First of all, what we need is actually, of course, chicken. And uh, actually, I already prepped the chicken yesterday. 
But I'm just gonna show you today how I make it. This is the ingredient. Okay, this is fennel, this is cumin, onion, we have ginger, we have a galangal, turmeric, okay, ginger, and of course, lots of lemongrass. In satay, we need a lot of lemongrass, basically because it brings a taste. And the tip of making satay, you need to roast these two herbs. And then you blend this all together. It becomes like this. The smell is so good. So I'm just gonna show you how to make the satay sauce, which is the peanut sauce. It's very simple. So we need peanut, ground nut, onion, bit of chili. This is the garlic, uh, ginger, lemongrass. This is palm sugar. You must actually roast the uh, peanuts. All right, after you roast the peanut, you need to grind it and it becomes just like this. The paste, all right? The paste is what you see here. All right, this is the paste. And later when we cook it, we'll, we'll need the, 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 the oil and the sugar. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add this. So I'm gonna mix the marinade with the chicken. Lots of sugar. Um, normally with this recipe, I would use for one kg, uh, one kilo of um, chicken, about one to two cups of sugar. And this is skewer that I already actually uh, soak it for a few hours. So you cut the chicken to cubes, so it's easy for you to stick it to this um, skewer. Just like that. Okay. So now, I'm going to proceed to the next one, how to make the satay sauce, okay? The ground nut, you're going to roast it for a while, yeah? And then you're going to grind it, and it becomes like this, okay? And then, all these herbs, except the uh, palm sugar, you're going to grind it, and it turns out like this. Okay, let's start. Some oil. First, let's cook. This one. Mm. Mm. In Solano, basically in Klang Valley, satay is our snack, right? Family, it's a family thing. Okay, I'm gonna add the peanut. Oh, I love this pot. Now, we're going to agak-agak the water, okay? Seems a lot, but it's not. The gula melaka, the palm sugar. Okay, I'm going to add tamarind juice, or tamarind paste, about this much. Agak-agak. Again, agak-agak. Ah. Okay, always agak-agak. How you like the taste? Mm. And let it cook. For 20 minutes maybe until the uh, sugar dissolves. Um, let's go see our satay. I don't use much uh, fat on it. I use a lot of um, the breast. So when we cook the satay, normally, yeah, we use oil and the lemongrass to infuse, and then of course this one to just dab, dab, dab on it. The more oil you use, the, the nicer it is. This one looks ready, it's a bit brown. This uh, soup is very simple. We can, we can eat it with baguette, you know. I'm gonna show you how I serve it, okay? So now the satay is ready and this is how it looks like. There you go. Mmm. And uh, we'll have it with the um, nasi ipik, rice cake, a bit of uh, onion, a bit of cucumber, the satay, and last but not least, the satay sauce. Enjoy the satay kajang. Bye!
graveyard at Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz Mosque. The beauty of this mosque is called is that uh, we in Malaysia we call this mosque the Blue Mosque. And the architecture design of the mosque is a combination of the Malay and modernist style of architecture. All right, here we are, guys. Check out this satay. We've got four different types of meat: goat, which we have tried before, rabbit. Two ostrich satays, which is amazing, as well as duck. So we've got a delicious meal here. We are just getting back to KL from Malacca, from Hari Raya. Mm. Tell me that's not the best satay you ever had. The meat is so soft. Mm -hmm. It's like melt in your mouth kind of meat. Whoa! This is the best satay I ever had. The meat is amazing. You don't have to chew it. You just put it with your tongue and just falls apart and yeah, it's so it, good. It Whoa, guys. This is, this is almost <laughs> this is almost six stars. Wow. It almost broke the scale. Dude, ostrich is so good. Are you kidding me? It's good, right? Okay, try it. Also, also, we could have just got ostrich. Ten ostrich. Okay, well, you haven't tried the kambing, which is wow. goat, and the uh, rabbit. So, see which one you like better. Okay, this is rabbit. Let's try rabbit. My first time having rabbit? I don't think so. I think I've had it before, yeah. but obviously, yeah. definitely yeah. first time having satay. Exactly. Okay, here we go. So are you planning really to get married for this year or next year? Actually this year. Uh, mm. So I postponed to next year. It's good too. Also very good. But there's like fatty bits. Mm. And kind of uneven parts. Right. No. A little bit more gamey. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know what the word gamey means, but it means like game meat. Chewy. Mm -hmm. Meat you have to catch yourself. Like meat that's not domesticated. Mm. More gamey. But also very good. So we are in Kampung Kuantan. We are going to see the fireflies. But remember, to visit fireflies at Kampung Kuantan must go at night. It's not at during the daytime. Kampung Kuantan is around 60 kilometers away from Kuala Lumpur and also in the state of Selangor.